Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Uh, cast time once again, and um, and let me go ahead and start by saying that there's going to be a fair amount of moving parts on this one, so just get ready for some mistakes to be made. So, and, and alrighty, I ended up messing up, so let me clear that out of there. Okay, I gotta do a, kind of do a little volume check here. Okay, it checks out. Okay, but anyway, um, this time around, no actual music. Uh, this is just going to be morning atmosphere in a cozy Japanese village, birdsong farmer. Uh, just for a little something different. So. Uh, a little bit of animation on this, so I hope it doesn't jack up my file size too much. forgot about that watermark being there. Bit on the annoying side. Okay, they're fading it out. They're fading it out. I was about to say I might have I might have to switch to something else if it was gonna stay there. It's just one of my little one of my little pet peeves. Just having watermarks in the uh, in your video. Especially if there are big huge watermarks that actually that can actually become a distraction. Um actually one of my um one of my favorite YouTube channels is it's an MMA channel called uh, Kihon Kimura. He does a he does a how good was such and such person exact actually. So, but he, it's a, it's a really you know I really liked watching it up until a point where he decided to add a watermark. Like here, oh here I got this. Let me. Here. I could show you. I could show you. First off, this is what he has. I mean, except his is transparent, but he's got the damn watermark like right here. That's very fucking distracting right there. So, so once I once I saw his latest episode that had that in there. Then I no longer watch it. No longer watch it unless he gets rid of that damn thing. So, but anyway. So, trying to get back on topic. Uh, just glad they got rid of that watermark in the lower left corner. Um, but otherwise, one big thing that occurred. Um, there was a, a other apartment complexes around where I live are starting to. Put a, have a smoking ban in their apartment buildings. Looks like uh, mine's doing it too. I just got a, I got a contract thing that I have to sign, saying um, I will not smoke inside, I will not smoke inside the building, um, and you can't even smoke in your patio. I mean, I don't, I don't smoke, so I, I don't really have that much of a dog in the fight. But you know, one of my coworkers who does smoke. And he lives in an apartment complex uh, right next to mine. He's, uh, I think he used to go outside in the patio and smoke. But now that they put the kibosh on that, he started smoking inside his apartment now. I got a feeling that's what's going to happen here in this complex. Because I'm pretty sure he ain't going to be the only one doing that. Because otherwise, um, the, only, the only designated smoking area that I could think of that he, he has to go to is like across the street. Like... It's, it's like they, they can't even smoke on apartment grounds, period. They have to, like, go across the street to the convenience store in order to do it or something. So I think that there, that there is kind of overkill. So I think what's going to happen now is uh, the, inside of my, uh, the inside of my apartment building is going to fucking reek of it now because everyone's just going to smoke indoors because they don't want to do it outside in the patio where they're more likely to be seen. You know, and they don't want to have to sit here and walk clear across Hell's Half Acre just to go to the designated smoking area either, so they'll be doing it indoors. So I got a feeling now the inside of the apartment building is going to be reeking. And I'm sure uh, management's probably going to be putting their foot down on that. 
and and to be to be fair, um, the land my landlady, she probably has no say in this. I mean, all she is, she's just like an on-site caretaker. She doesn't. She just like takes care of like the maintenance and stuff like that. She's not. Oh, how, she I don't think she really takes care of the administrative side of things. Like she's not. She doesn't make the rules. She just um, enforces them. So, but I got a feeling that um, it's it's gonna put her. It's gonna put her in a bad spot too. You know, cause if she catch, you know, if she catches, uh, if she catches somebody smoking inside the bill, you know, inside the uh, inside the building, she has to say something. Probably had to put a put a note on the front door saying, you know, smoking is bad on the premises. You can't even smoke inside your apartment building. You know, go to this designated smoking area that you have to go that you have to travel to you have to travel all the way to Bumfuck Egypt for, you know, so. But yeah, I mean, you ban shit, they're just gonna find more creative ways of, creative ways of doing it, you know. It's probably true for a lot of for a lot of things in life. Um, one thing that comes to mind is the um, the parental advisory sticker that you, that they uh that you have to put on some albums that have swearing and sexual content and stuff. It actually backfired. Um, now, and I, I think um, I think um, I know who's, and the the support against this actually came, or one of the uh, one of the detractors of the sticker was from the least likely person, Donnie Osmond. He's about as clean and white bread as they come, but yet even he was against it. So, and I, oh God, I freaking love what he said about it too. He. You know, he basically said something like, kids want, like, kids want what's cool. But if there's an explicit lyric sticker on your album cover, kids are going to think that's cool. And they're going to go buy that album and not mine, which is clean, white bread Christian music. But now, in order for me to be cool, in order to have people listen to me, I have to start swearing and having sexually explicit content in my music just to have that explicit lyric sticker on my album cover so kids buy my kids buy my stuff too or so, so I'm paraphrasing it but something along those lines so based on that I could the smoking ban here is probably gonna backfire as well you know now they're gonna they're gonna find you know they're gonna find devious ways to light up in the hopes of not getting caught you know they're actually gonna make the problem worse um I think drugs are drugs are probably the same way too. You know, you make drugs illegal. That just you know they find they find more, you know more nefarious ways of using it. And uh, I kind of forgot what I was gonna say. I was thinking uh, drug dealers and uh, drug makers will probably start making a will start charging even higher prices for it because now they they don't want to get caught, so they have to. They have to, you know, charge higher now to charge more to make it worth their while, you know, make it worth all the effort. Oh, taking a drink, by the way. Well, Arizona green tea. But one thing I do have to say, to be fair, is at least in my complex, everybody has until February. So they have until February until this goes into effect. So at least they're given a chance to do something like try to quit smoking or you know switch to nicorette gum you know stuff like that they have time they have time to prepare uh my co-worker from what i understand of him he wasn't even given that like the the band went into effect just like that so so i think this this place here was uh spared that I mean, they got a few months, so. But, yeah, enough of that. Um, but, and um, last night, I um. 
Last night I did a I did a Gems of War video about my uh, my latest iteration of the uh, Goblin build that I use, but um. Nope. Forgot to move that down. Um, but I, I figured something like this would probably be a little, probably would have been a little hateful, or uh, probably there was like a, I didn't give any context behind the uh, the uh, little statement or statements. I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was, I figured it might have ruffled a few feathers. So I thought I would explain here what I was um, uh, my um, uh, my jumping off point, I guess. Um, I was on the forums, the Gems of War forums. I recently created an account, and I also did a Google search on, uh, like, Gems of War goblins or something like that, and, and, um, this forum topic came up saying, goblins need a nerf, like, 50%, you know, they need to be nerfed to 50% extra turn or, you know, something like that, but, you know, and I was kind of ticked when I saw this. I'm like, dude, are you fighting the kind of guys that I'm fighting? I mean, you know, you might think that, you know, play, oh, and I, I need to, I need to explain a little further, a little further here for those that, uh, for those that have never played Gems of War before, but the way, in this game here, the way goblins work is, um, uh, it's a type of race, but, um, all of them have it, uh, all of them, no matter what, what else they do, is they all have the extra ability of gaining an extra turn. Once you use your ability, you get to go again. And um, theoretically, you could put together a team that could, again, in theory, give you infinite turns, meaning you're completely shutting your opponent out of the out of the match. Uh, but I think, but to me, gripes like this are are to me very uninformed. I mean, and um, in my mind, very hypocritical as well. I mean, especially given the kind of content that I'm doing. I'm doing mostly like high level PvP where where the the hang on, hang on, where the opponent where the opponents I'm fighting they could already take you out and completely shutting you out of the game. And these are non goblin builds. So they could already do this, you know. One guy generates a you know, in one turn, boom, blows the whole board gives the other team all the mana that they could possibly want and then the next one and then the next one or next one will probably give you every fucking deep give your whole team every fucking debuff under the book or at least the ones that matter that can really show that can really or specific especially goblins um i I'll, I'll once again i'll probably have to explain a little further what wrong one um anyway um, there's a, there's a debuff in the game called Frozen, which prevents, uh, which, which prevents, uh, which prevents cards, cards slash players slash troops. I'm probably going to use those terms interchangeably, but anyway, it, um, uh, it's a debuff that, uh, it prevents, it prevents affected troops from, uh, getting, in, getting extra turns. So, it's, so, I mean, so the, uh, this isn't, my goblin builds are not foolproof, and like I said, many of the many of the teams that are out there uh, already have uh, have these kind of debuffs uh, debuffs in their builds, you know. So, but anyway, yeah, I was kind of so. Just I'm again, I'm trying to add a little bit of context to this, so it's a little. I I read this. I'm like, really. Like, dude, I'm fighting, I'm already fighting teams that could already one-shot my group. You know, and they're not goblins. So, so I found that, I found that, I found this to be very hypocritical, because I'm pretty sure that people that are complaining about this are probably the same people that are using the same bills to shut me down in one turn. So, that kind of ticked me off. But, um, But it act, it actually all, it also kind of got me to thinking a little bit too about uh, Magic the Gathering way back in the day, back when I used to play it. Um, they had a they had abilities, they had various mechanics like counter spells, like whenever your opponent tries to cast a spell, 
you can counter it immediately before it even hits the table. Um, and there's, a uh, there's whole decks that are centered around this. Like, just doing nothing but countering your opponent's spells, keeping him from doing anything. Um, and there's also, they're kind of rare these days. A lot of them are either, either restricted or banned in tournaments. But, uh, they, they have the same, they have the same mechanic that goblins have. You can take an extra turn after your current one. But, um, you know, but I'm, you know, but, um, it was, but back in the, back in the day, I mean, infinite loop, infinite loop decks in Magic the Gathering are very much a bane. You know, but part of that too is, I mean, I was kind of against it too, but part of that too is, um, it wasn't really so much of being, or, or part of that too is the context is totally different. And this is something else I forgot to mention about Gems of War. Um, in PvP, you're not actually playing a human opponent. What you're playing is, um, what you're playing is, is whatever, whatever, uh, whatever group you're playing, or you're playing his group that he chooses to quote unquote defend or defend his kingdom with. So again, you're not actually playing a human. You're just playing a team. You're just playing a team that he created. So totally different context. So that was, so that was one of the reasons why I'm, I'm kind of saying this now, just to try to clear the air, you know, try to show that I'm not being a hypocrite when I say this. So I don't, I don't see why somebody would get so mad when, you know, when somebody beats your, beats your chosen group in PvP. I mean, it's not like you're actually there. I mean, and, and in this game here, you can retreat from battle at any time, as long as, you know, at any time, literally, literally, like, you can bail out even while your opponent is doing his thing. And all it's going to do is it's just going to count. It automatically counts as a loss. So I don't see why uh, people complaining about goblins or anything like that are getting all mad about, you know, about another, you know, one, one group beating yours. It's not like you're actually forced to watch the whole thing. I know I don't. If it looks like my opponent's starting to get away with, you know, starting to get his game plan going, which means I have no chance, I bail. You know, no harm, no foul. I don't get mad or anything. I just don't see much of a point in being there because if the battle's a poor gone conclusion, you know. So, it's all, again, totally different context. Now, in Magic the Gathering, you are playing against a human opponent, which is why I was, you know, which is why I was against these kind of infinite loop decks. Not to mention, or at least in my mind, they're not very creative. You know, but just, you know, but just like in Gems of War, no deck in Magic the Gathering is unbeatable. So there's always, uh, there's always ways to shut them down. And then, and then secondly, if I, are, I secondly, it's, from a strategic perspective, it's completely futile. I mean, if I know your deck has an impotent turn, it has a, if you have an infinite loop deck, I'm not playing you. No point in me being there. I mean, you know, if you have a, if there's no way that I'm going to be able to beat you, there's just no point in me playing you. In fact, I'm like that in Gems of War as well, in PvP. If I see that, um, I keep messing this up. Uh, but you know, if I see that, you know, if I see that the clash you're playing is a frost mage or an elementalist, I'm not going to bother playing you. The battle's already a foregone conclusion because those um those classes have um they can inflict a frozen debuff on me, completely shutting me down. So, and if um uh, if there's no way I can cleanse it, then yeah, I ain't going to bother playing you. And I'm like I'm like that with magic. I'd be like that in real life too. If you have an infinite turns deck. I'm not playing you. I mean, I'm gonna go find you know. I'm gonna go find a player that I that I can actually beat. And secondly, especially true with something like counter spells. You know, if you had if your deck had nothing but counter spells in it, and there are decks out there that do this, they're called permission decks. You know, because in order for me to cast anything, I basically have to ask permission. You know, can I cast this? No, you can't. Counter spell. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, if I see you had a permission deck, I'm not playing you. Or, 
or I know that you're gonna have nothing but counter spells, so it's just gonna make for a slow game. I'm gonna hardly play anything, and it doesn't make for very much fun. You know, if you're not gonna let me play anything, I'm not gonna play anything. So, but on the other hand, though, and again, this is this is kind of an apples and oranges thing here. On the other hand, though, having having a few having a few counter spells in your deck, though. I mean, that I think is fucking great, you know? I mean, because I mean, because these abilities in and of themselves to me are freaking awesome. When done, especially when done in moderation. If you only have a few of them, but if you only have a few of these in your deck, uh, you're, you're really gonna, I mean, you're really gonna put me in a funk. It's not I have to, I have to play the guessing game. Do I cast this? Do you have that one or two counter, you know, do you have that counter spell in your hand? You know, that kind of thing. So, so, but anyway, that was my, um, that was my little rant on that. I wanted to explain that here because I didn't really get a chance to explain it when I made my video yesterday. Like I said, I thought I might've, uh, I might've gotten somebody offended or I might've ruffled a few feathers. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to sketch out a little bit of context behind what I was talking about last night. So, <clears throat> okay. But otherwise, um, that's gonna do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. I pretty much said all the things that I wanted to say today. So, and I gotta get, I gotta set to getting this thing uploaded and processed, and I got a feeling it might take a little while because. There's a little bit of animation in this video, so it, that's going to jack up the file size. So, but otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, But until then, thanks again for dropping by, everybody. And see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>